Shabbat Shalom, and welcome to Five Minutes of Torah with the Beth Israel Rabbi. As you can see, I am currently in Eilat, with the Red Sea, and Egypt, and Jordan behind me. We are just finishing what has been an incredible trip. We began with a week seminar in Jerusalem and Tel Aviv, and then there was an extension to our trip which included time in Tel Aviv as well, in Petra, in Jordan, and here in Eilat. The participants on this trip learned so much, not only about the law of modern Israel, but its history, its development, its challenges as well. One of the events that I loved was when we went to the Yitzhak Rabin Museum. This is a museum that was dedicated to Rabin's memory within just a couple years of his assassination in 1995. The Rabin Museum goes over Yitzhak Rabin's life and the history of Israel and even the world in the years leading up to his birth, during his life, and in the immediate aftermath of his assassination. It is a fascinating museum in which our participants had an opportunity to learn the details of not only what Israel faces today, what it faced in the past, and the very reason for why we must have a modern nation of Israel. One of the things that I thought was great about the museum was that it established so well how the modern nation of Israel came to be built. And the fact that wealthy Jewish individuals like Rothschild and the Jewish National Fund, the JNF, in the early Zionist years, well over 100 years ago, went about the task of building and buying swaths of land in order to create this modern country that today exists. Of course, we know that their dream of making things simple was not so easy. But indeed, they succeeded in building and in creating the modern nation of Israel. As I think about that aspect of how it is that we're here today, I also think about this week's Torah portion, Parshat Chai Sarah. Even though this week's Torah portion literally means the life of Sarah, it is also actually more about the passing of Sarah. And the beginning of the Parsha talks about how Abraham, well, Abraham, Sarah's husband, wanted to seek a burial spot for Sarah after she passed away. And he found the perfect spot and went to the owner of the land named Ephron and asked if he could purchase the land. Ephron said, no, don't worry about it, I'll give it to you. But Abraham insisted. He said, I want to pay a price that is malé, a price that is full. Rashi, the 11th century French rabbi and biblical commentator, explains that Rashi wanted to pay the full and fair price of the day. So finally, Ephron gives in. And he says, pay me. 400 shekels of silver. What's fascinating about the word shekel is that it also means weight. And it means weight because it, it, there's a balance that takes place. When one paid, and in the ancient world, they gave an amount of silver that was equal in weight to the product that they were buying. And so the silver balances out the purchase, and thus the purchase itself is also maler, it is full. A purchase also becomes shalem, or complete. That is thus the reason that we say today to pay le shalem, to make something complete, which is also the word for peace, shalom. And so it is my prayer that indeed, that the early purchasing of the land of Israel, and of course, unfortunately, the, the wars and the victories that took place after that, will ultimately lead to shalom, to peace. The participants of our trip had first-hand opportunity to see that that still is not the case, that Israel still faces challenges, because while we were here, missiles fell in Sidorot and in Ashkelon and Ashdod, and even a couple in Tel Aviv <clears throat> from the Gaza Strip. Thankfully, at the time, we were in Jerusalem, and our group did not have to worry about running to bomb shelters, but the people of Israel still do. And so I pray that there will soon come a day in which all of the people of Israel and our neighbors are able to live bishalom, in peace, in a complete way. Shabbat shalom.